masks are going to asphyxiate me. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Rick Kitzman, and I'll be your MC for today once again. And welcome to Althea. A lot of familiar faces. Uh, do we have any first timers here today? One, two, three, four people. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, if you would like to start receiving our newsletter, uh, see. Is Sarma here today? No. Okay. Um, see one of the um, ushers and give them your email address and we'll get you on the newsletter because that's really very informative. All right, wonderful. Four new people. That's terrific. All right. So uh, today is National Animal Cracker Day. Did you know that? <laughs> And yesterday was National Cheese Ball Day. You know, you just say cheese ball and you can't help but smile, right? I mean, cheese ball, cheese ball, cheese ball. Uh, the reason I mention that is because I would like you to put your phones on silent or vibrate or stun. And if it goes off, our uh, sergeant at arms will make you eat a cheese ball with animal crackers to get your phone back. Just kidding. I had to remember to shut off mine too. So typically we start off, for those of you who are new, with announcements, and so uh, moving right along, I'm going to go into that. Um, basically this is what classes are coming up. Uh, we have a Thursday group open to the community called Community Connections, which is run by Kathy Humphrey, and I've heard so many good things about that group. It's a way for the community to stay connected and to share openly. She's very organized, she has a topic for the day, and uh, then you know she monitors and facilitates it from their own. So that is Thursdays at 11 o'clock for an hour and a half. Zach Cobb's Developing Intuition Through Creativity class, uh, quoting from him, writing about my life is my spiritual path, and for you, Intuition is your inner teacher. Solve your problems with imaginations, imagination and allowance of solutions. Uh, the class is called Developing Intuition Through Creativity. It meets Thursdays. I believe the first class has already started, but I believe you can jump in if you're interested. So these are all on the altheacenter.org website or the email, there's a link. Uh, Suzanne Hunt, who spoke so eloquently last week, is running a class called Healing Meditation One, uh, Energy Awareness. This meets for seven weeks, Thursday evenings, beginning April 29th. And there is a break on the prize for early registrants, so be sure you sign up for that. Is Suzanne here today? Oh, there she is. Do you have anything you want to add, Suzanne? Or? Okay, terrific. If you have questions, she's here today, so see her. Uh, the next class is called Nine Ways to Love the Enneagram and Your Relationships with uh, Starting <clears throat> or, and Relationships. Uh, and this is being taught by Julia Foster. Is Julia here today? There she is. Uh, do you want to say anything about your class? or? She loves teaching it. Hopes you come. So, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> let's see, this meets Tuesdays starting May 11th, so you've got time to register for it. It will be a Zoom class, okay? Uh, we do have our community outreach program. Uh, if you would like to sign up for that, uh, this is where if you've got some extra time to run an errand for someone, take someone to a doctor's appointment, go to the grocery store, or if you yourself need assistance and help. Uh, that's what the community outreach is for. And you can um, email staff at altheacenter.org to either sign up to volunteer time or for requests. Uh, don't forget we have smile.amazon and um, community donations through King Supers. Those um, instructions are also on our newsletter. And uh, so that's the classes that are coming up. And I wanted to give you a very brief update on the transition process. For those of you who are new, <clears throat> uh, we lost our spiritual director, 
misplaced him, can't find him, I don't know what happened to him, but all of a sudden one Sunday he was gone. It's like, Jonathan, where's Jonathan? No, he gave us plenty of notice. <clears throat> and we miss him. So we are in the throes of discovering where in the world does Alfeo want to go. And uh, we began a process oh, about two, three weeks ago with Alma, Alma, and this was, uh, this is Pam Getty's daughter who is a long time member here. She's in New York, she's a spiritual coach, she works in the business world. So she is beginning to guide the community through the transition process. <clears throat> and the first phase was interviewing each of the board members uh, one, one by one, they were one-on-ones. Then she is interviewing currently now uh, members of the congregation. Uh, now, if you are interested in participating, because there are two sessions which have nobody listed in them, email staff at altheacenter.org and we will do our best to get you signed up for one of those sessions. Because what the board really, uh, what's the best word to use, really wanted to embody was community participation in this process. You know, the board is, you know, we're the guiding captains of the ship, perhaps, but you're the wind in the sails. Ooh, I like that. That's kind of cool. I'm going to use that again. Cue Bette Midler. I don't know. Um, but I mean, seriously, you know, we, we, we're, we want to do this as a group. We want to do this together and as, with as much transparency as possible, uh, which means that's very possible. Uh, after Alma visits with all the congregants, uh, we are planning on doing a survey which will go out to everybody on the email list. And then once we tabulate that, and we have, uh, she gave the board a report on last Thursday about the board's responses. She's gonna create another one about the congregations and then we'll do another report based off the survey. And then we'll put it all together and <laughs> we'll see what we have. So even though this is a lengthy, time-consuming process, we don't want to move too quickly. Um, it's a very, uh, it's actually a very exciting time for all of us. Yes, there are worries, perhaps, about the future of Alfie as a community, but there's been a lot of excitement that I've been hearing and that's been generated in the group meetings and, and the town hall we had. There's a lot of excitement and a lot of participation. So. It's all, you know, wonderful pointers that we are moving in the right direction. So that's the latest update. Uh, we are going to, we are finally talking about having the annual general meeting, which was supposed to be in March, obviously because of COVID and other restrictions that is being delayed. But that should be coming up either in May, hopefully in May, maybe June, but we, we'd like to present all this to the community in one fell swoop, one swell swoop. All right, uh, how about an opening prayer after all that earthly information? All right, so if, if you're comfortable, just close your eyes and take a deep breath and And, and what? Just let it go. And we know that as we breathe in and breathe out, we are breathing in that magnificence that animates this earthly shell, this spirit that makes us unique and individualized expressions of the divine. And in this quiet, we can finally turn off the volume of the world and just allow this very sacred time, this sacred space to just wash over us and to revel in the peace and the quiet and the wisdom and the knowledge and the joy of being alive in this moment. And so for this day, I declare that there is 
sweetness. And that Colorado sky is so blue and the sun is shining. And we are with each other in this beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. We have a wonderful person giving us a wonderful message. We have wonderful entertainment. We have a terrific, wonderful staff who makes this all happen. And we have you, each and every one of you, bringing your soul and your hearts and your minds to this service. To this service that will replenish us with light and life and love and laughter and energy and to help us and aid us in going back to the real world. And we know the real world has its issues, has its problems, and we all do. We, it's part of the human experience. But we know that there is more. We know that we are more. We know that our thoughts and hearts can change the world. And so with gratitude, I'm so thankful and grateful for each and every one of your presence here and for the honor of being up here, for the service, for our entertainment, for our message from Mary Jo and Stephen and Daryl and everyone who made this happen. And so I just once again just let it go. And so it is. Amen, amen, amen. All righty then. Moving into the next item on our agenda. And again, for those of you who are new, we typically moved into what is called the statement of being. Our history here is that uh, the foundation was laid by four women, three sisters and a woman in, uh, who I believe started in San Francisco. And they created the first divine science, which was a new thought ministry. And in Denver here, that was quite a big deal, quite a big deal, and it still is. And so we are the inheritors of these four women's consciousness and their hearts and their minds. And so we used to print this out, but you can just follow along or just close your eyes and listen to our voice. Old timers, <laughs> old timers, uh, long time members, <clears throat> which are not necessarily old timers, uh, <laughs> will know it by heart. Okay. Althea's statement of being God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. We are individualized expressions of God and are ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And now we have Daryl. Where's Daryl? Did we lose Daryl? Oh, there's Daryl. Welcome, Daryl. He has a special treat for all of us. Thank you so much. Thanks. In my efforts as the manager at the building, I have a real and profound privilege. Not only do I work to help create Althea's future, I get to be surrounded by Althea's past. It's impossible to not feel the rich heritage and shared knowledge and experience of all those souls who've gone before. Melinda Kramer and Althea and Nona Brooks established the College of Divine Science when they came here from Pueblo, Colorado in 1898. The memorial book is at, at the back of our beautiful sanctuary is a historic registry that includes the names of the founders of Unity Church, Mile High Church in Lakewood, even the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. They studied with and were ordained by Nona Brooks and all the other gifted spiritual leaders and teachers at the College of Divine Science. And we need to remember that right here is where much of what we now refer to as new thought was actually born. Our statement of being says it all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. 
And then it goes on to tell us we are individualized expressions of God. That's an eloquent way of saying that God or spirit or whatever term you choose to express it is in every one of us, that we are the creators of our own destiny. And that's what makes Althea different. I'd like Stephen to join me now. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart, open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in So our, before we get to our speaker for the day, our talent is Stephen, and he is a long time uh, player here at Althea, and we're so happy to have him back. It's like old times. Thank you. 
Thank you, Stephen. Our guest speaker today is Mary Jo Honiotis, and she delights in life. She is an ordained minister with Centers for Spiritual uh, Living, and she uses her training on, in universal spiritual principles and the wisdom of nature to support others. Her second act, as she calls it, is a entrepreneurship. She owns Champion Home Transitions a healthcare agency that facilitates independence for many of the hurting and the lonely and uh, I guess anyone who needs help in our healthcare system. So please welcome Mary Jo. I think Stephen's piece was my talk today. <laughs> Changing the name of my talk to the universe doesn't do pointless or extraneous things. I feel a little loud. Am I a little loud? No, I'm good? Okay. I am a little loud? Okay. I'm a little loud. Okay. Oh, I guess I should keep talking. So he knows. Got my timer, Jenny. Okay, so a number of years ago, I was coming home from a doctor's appointment, and I pulled in my driveway, and a very funny thing happened, kind of funny, strange. It was as if my body was, my body had an urge, let's just say that. And it was as if it was saying to me, Mary Jo, why don't you just open the garage door, pull the car in, keep it running, and shut the garage door. True. Happened another time about a week later. What do I do with that? Now, on an awareness path and spiritual journey, I have had a relationship with my body, but it never talked to me that way. And so because I live and move and breathe in spiritual principle, I realized this was an opportunity to cultivate something. Something was happening here. And I believe that there are no pointless or extraneous things that happen in life or in the universe. By the way, you have a prayer stick that we were given. Um, does anyone not have one? On to Danny. Danny needs one. Um, so this is along the lines of when the women, and this is true for all artwork. There's some more over here. Matter of fact, this happened um, with the uh, Althea Be My Valentine. So this talking stick is for you, and it's meant to be for you to have a conversation with your beloved, with your soul. And so while we're talking today, while I'm talking and you're thinking and reacting and responding and thinking, then it's gonna, this is going to be infused with today's activity. Um, the stick came from a branch that gave itself up in the storm. <laughs> and the gold thread is what I've learned um, about the color gold. It represents your essence. So it represents who you are who you came here and who will, who you were before you came in, who you will be after you leave. It doesn't matter what you're doing in your life, the gold thread re represents your essence. So I'm, I'm thinking of quilting circles when the women would tell the stories, anybody doing any kind of craft, and those quilts had those stories in them. So. So I eventually I realized, and this lasted about three years, I realized I was in a dark night of the soul. And uh, there's a, an author, his name is Michael Mirdod. He wrote a book called The Dark Night of the Soul. And he says the dark night of the soul is a purging process that calls us to 
to release all that is unhealed or unnecessary. Releasing what is in the way. Is something, is that my earring hitting that? I'm kind of sensitive to the sound, and you probably are too. Okay, let's see. I'll just stand like this. Releasing all that is in the way of our highest good. Now, I believe we have to have made a commitment in our heart and soul to do something important, to do something meaningful, to contribute big, to serve, in order for the dark night of the soul to happen. Because somehow, the universe has got to intercede with us when that happens. So, uh, Michael Merdod talks about five recommendations or practices that you engage in in the dark night of the soul. And the first one is die well. <laughs> Trust the process. Don't fight it. Surrender. Well, that's really hard to do when your whole life has been turned upside down. It's very important. Being present is the most transformational practice we have for anything going on in our life. One of my favorite spiritual teachers, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, said that all spiritual growth is letting go. And that was the task before me. I couldn't quite see more than a couple steps in front of me anyway, so I was in this for real. I, I texted Jonathan yesterday and said, I'm speaking tomorrow, would love your blessing, how are you doing, are you still here? And he wrote back and said, got my blessing and I'm leaving in a week and wish I was there, wish I could be there. And I'm telling you that because I read this quote that I love, it's by Jean-Pierre de Cousat, who is a French priest, and he said this, what the one arranges for us to experience at each moment is the best and holiest thing that could ever happen to us. What the one arranges for us to experience each moment is the best and holiest thing that could happen to us. Well, when I saw the quote, I said, I need to find out who this person is. I looked it up, I Googled him, and guess what website came up? Spirituality and practice which is where Jonathan is now heading to. So that's the, that's the company that he's working for. So I thought, thank you, Jonathan, for the blessing. In the 17, early seven, late 1700s, this gentleman wrote a book called The Sacrament of the Present Moment. I'm thinking I might get it. Trust is another thing that happens when we die well. It's different than surrender. When I was working with the word surrender, I kept thinking, it, for me, it meant giving up or resigning. But trust, that was a word I didn't really know. Trust takes time. It takes the ability to take your hands off the wheel. There's a, a song that Carrie Underwood does that says, Jesus, take the wheel. Whoever it is that is your beloved needs to take the wheel. That's why. These things are happening. The second is feed your soul. Now, this is very understandable. We want to do things or be involved in things that lift us up. And we don't really feel like it. I didn't really feel like it. But the divine grace was walking along with me and providing me opportunities. What I did for me, this meant a deeper understanding and a deeper relationship with my body. So I got in the water. I walked in the woods, I cut out gluten and dairy, uh, <laughs> and I, involved, I got involved in a conscious breathing practice. Now the water, that was something else. A friend of mine, Cindy, invited me to swim with her in her triathlon training group. Yeah. And swimming was the first part, so I've said, I'll just go with you on the first part. So she would pick me up three times a day, three times a week. Uh, for an hour and a half, and this lasted for about two months. I loved it. I felt so held in the presence in that water, and I felt it sometimes I was swimming in my tears. At the end of the time, I said to her, Cindy, thank you for taking me into the water to keep me from drowning, because that's what it felt like. John, John O'Donohue, an Irish poet, 
says in his book, The Four Elements, water has been found in the heart of granite stones, which are 400 million years old. The granite stones shaping themselves kept the water that lay around them. And the stone preserved that water and managed to keep it alive and fluent. And John says that it's a metaphor for the tenderness that lies at the heart of the most enduring hardness. I also during this time was able to be more engaged with the teacher, uh, nature and native spirituality. It really kept me on the planet to be on the earth. And of course being at Althea lifted my spirits. Thank you Althea. Third one, do your inner work. A good time to look at your deepest issues and patterns. You think? You think? I'll address this in just a minute, but here are three questions I used that I've worked with during this time. What is trying to happen here? What am I supposed to learn? What is this teaching me? And then what if what is happening here is the best thing that could be happening? That is a good question. Because at that point, you have to realize that the universe does not do pointless or extraneous things. The fourth is watch for signs of guidance from beyond. From beyond what you've known, I think. For me, uh, one of the steps that happens right before the dark night of the soul, according to some charts I was looking at, was that you're having an experience of dominion and ego uh, strength or ego, out of balance ego. And so my, my uh, spirit said to me, this is about the death of your ego. That anything that you're attached to that you think makes you who you are has got to die. And so anything that I thought, anything that I was attached to that I thought made me who, who I was is where I got guidance. And you know, this is like not absolute. This isn't black and white. This is like major, like water. But that's what I realized. And so, of course, when you are um, taken down like this, guidance comes from the truer place for me. And one of the things that I committed to was my body, my mind, and my soul, I want them to be congruent because they weren't at that time. So at this time, in terms of guidance, literally this healthcare agency where we provide independent living for individuals who are pretty much forgotten by society. We move them into apartment living. And the, the grace and the take me to my knees gratitude that I've been involved in working here um, has been amazing. And this particular opportunity fell in my lap. And I own it, the agency with my sister fell in my lap with $50,000 of grant money. Awesome. The physical feeling of coming out of the dark night for me was kind of a completion and that speaks to the fifth step, which is come back, come back to life. When you see and approach the light at the end of the tunnel, come back and start moving forward. Ernest Holmes says, and I never understood this for the longest time, the perception of wholeness is the consciousness of healing. So when I perceive that something is whole, that it, is, that it has completed itself, when I see that the universe doesn't do pointless or extraneous things and that this is all has had a purpose, then that's healing. I can see you can relate to that. I forgot to tell you what actually happened to me. <laughs> well, happened to me. I wasn't necessarily a victim, but I was done unto, which is a spiritual term. Um, I left my spiritual community. So, so what I was going to say is after that day in the driveway, uh, spirit said, let's just do a reset for everything. I left my spiritual community that I was working with for eight years, and I prepared for that for like 15 my 25-year-old niece died of a drug overdose. My father began his walk home. For 20 months, I was his caregiver because I didn't have a job and with my mother. And so my father died. 
my financial life with my husband became very unstable. And get this, my dog died. I looked at him and said, don't. <laughs> and he did anyway. But it, that's another talk because he gave me an amazing gift when he died. So as I was coming out, I also participated in a speaker's workshop. And it drilled you down to what is your message? What is your message? What's the message of your life? And the message of my life is that I matter. And you matter. And everything matters. That's my message. Let me show you a little bit about how that relates to my deepest issues and patterns. Do we have a slide? Oh, there it is. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give it a couple more minutes and then I'll just have to tell you without the picture. Okay, oh, he's, that must be a blessing. Oh, there it is. oh, good. Can't see it, but hey. All right, so up here are pictures of me in my family, in my faith, and kind of in my passion for life. So in the family picture, if you can see it, there are eight children. You guys can't see it, can you? No, okay. There's eight children under all within eight years. I'm the one on the upper left. And you can see the look in my mother's face. Can you imagine what it was like getting everybody ready for that picture? Now there were eventually nine of us. And what I want to say about that is it was pretty easy for me to kind of get a message with all those people that I didn't matter. Or, you know, who am I in the midst of all that? I think if you talk to a psychologist, a physiologist, a neurologist, an engineer, any kind of scientist, and they would tell you that it's impossible for two well-meaning adults to fill all the needs of, those, of that many children. That's one place where I began this yearning to, to individuate. Of course you do. All right, there I am in First Communion, looking over at the camera my faith grew up Catholic and my faith said you matter if you don't matter you matter if you put everybody before yourself oh that's still a hard one for me but you know there's a gift there but you matter get this you matter if you martyr And my mother, bless her heart, she's 91, proud of her family. She lives nine seconds from me. She still has a hard time asking for what she needs. And the third one, oh my goodness. I don't know if you can see, but I'm holding a baton. <laughs> so I discovered the joy of twirling the baton when I was about 12. It was an athletic event for me. I was really good because I used it, I, I played with it all the time, and guess what? Now I'm thinking it was a way that I could like get away from everybody and have my own thing. I had students when I was 12. I helped, I co-directed a, a drill team. I was in parades, I did competition, and I could not wait until I got into high school to try out to be the high school twirler. Then, I get to high school, somebody, I don't even know who it was, I don't even think it was a voice of authority, but somebody said to me, you can't try, try out to be the twirler unless you uh, play an instrument. Uh. What? I didn't play an instrument. I didn't play an instrument. So I put my batons away. Now I was having an experience of joy in my body. This was a congruent experience of joy in my body. Partly because I just never put the batons down, but I loved it. 
And so, you know, I went on to high school, on in high school, I made straight A's, but I partied, smoking pot, you know, I, I, was, I was in my own way of like numbing from the fact that something I felt so powerfully connected to didn't matter. <laughs> or I just said it, I said it didn't matter. I wonder where was the advocate inside of me? Where was the advocate maybe in my parents that could say, that's a bunch of hogwash. You know, all you need to do is go, you know, challenge that. But that didn't happen. So, what I want to say is that our message and our life's work often lives in our pain. And this is what I came into, what came into fullness for me. And I'll tell you that in that family, I, this represents kind of what I do now. <laughs> You know, I, I'm a life celebrant, is what I say that I am, and I do formal things like weddings and celebrations of life, but I take that into everything that I do. I know how to be in community. I, I, I thrive on community. I, um, I, I recognize the value of many voices. And my faith, what I learned to do was be devoted. You know, when I was 18 and my parents said, as long as you're 18 and you go to church with us when you're done, you know, you can go. And I went. And I went and I found, I found new thought which said to me that all faiths say the same thing. I'm like, I am in for that. So I, I wasn't afraid to dive deep in my spiritual life. And then, of course, the twirling, this is very fascinating. I have a sense of space. I have a sense of people in a space. So what twirling did for me is it gave me the gift of kinesiology and energy. My, my well, even Sonia will laugh at me, but uh, my, my family will laugh at me when we go into an, uh, a restaurant and they seat us at a table and they look at me and they go, is it okay? <laughs> but that gave me such a beautiful psychic gift that twirling did and I'm using it still today. So do you know what the odds of one in 400 trillion refer to? Anybody? One in 400 trillion, that's 12 zeros. What? That's right. Those are the odds that you were born. That you were born. The, the, the universe does not do pointless or extraneous things. And if you could relate it all to this dark night of the soul, and in a way, perhaps Althea might be going through these steps. I, c I couldn't help but think about that as I was doing that. That, that there's a thread, and that's what the gold thread is on your prayer stick. There's a thread of you going through every single experience in your life. So I may have put my batons away, but I didn't give them away. for receiving my silliness. <laughs> Let us pray. With the beautiful breath, we come into the present moment. And anytime we want to know what's it like to come into the present moment, all we have to do is breathe. We just take a moment to receive whatever insights or ahas we've received here today. There's no accident that you are here.
And with the breath, we just continue to allow the love, the joy that the universe has for us to infuse our body, our mind, and our soul. And we make a commitment to do things that lift our spirit, to be present, to be willing to look at our issues and patterns if they're presented to us. To be open to the guidance, allow the earth to be our teacher and to come back, come back to the self, to the essence, to the life that we've been given. Give thanks for this. I let it be and together let us say Amen, hallelujah, and so it is, aho, whatever works for you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mary Jo. Uh, now is, was, is still uh, the time when we bless our divine connection to infinite abundance. Normally we would pass around the plates, but uh, in this new day and age, we are simply acknowledging that at some point in time, you share your gifts with Althea. And if you want to do so today, uh, we do have... What's our dip it? Is that what it's called? Dip jar. dip jar. I dip it. Dip it. Dip jar. The dip jar, which is our latest newfangled technological <laughs> device where you literally dip your uh, credit card and boom, makes a contribution. Can't get much easier than that. And of course, we do accept cash as well. Greenbacks. What the heck? So let's just do a prayer a very quick. Um, simple quick prayer acknowledging that we are each in our own way one with the infinite abundance of the universe that this flows within every single cell of our being and body and that in our hearts we share these gifts that are infinite we share them with each other we share them with this center we share them with Althea so that this community can thrive and survive gloriously. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and so it is. Amen, amen. And we have, let's see, was it? You're next. <laughs> right? See next? Okay. Once again, Stephen.
can't tell you how good it feels to be here. <laughs> Eagle Poem by Joy Harjo. To pray, you open your whole self to sky, to earth, to sun, to moon, to one whole voice that is you. And know there is more that you can't see, can't hear, can't know, except in moments steadily growing and in languages that aren't always sound, but other circles of motion. Like Eagle that Sunday morning over Salt River, circled in blue sky and wind, swept our hearts clean with sacred wings. We see you, we see ourselves, and know that we must take the utmost care and kindness in all things. Breathe in, knowing we are made of all this, and breathe, knowing we are truly blessed because we were born and die soon within the true circle of motion, like eagle rounding out the morning inside us. We pray that it will be done in beauty, in beauty. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. I'm Jenny, and I am on the team that is trying to pull together these Sundays and make sure that they are full of amazing music. <laughs> Woo! Full of amazing speakers. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Just basically full of amazing. So thank you all for being here. For those of you who have never been here before, look around. We are normally about four to five times, sometimes six times what you see, right? This is our pandemic. We're just coming out of the gate Sunday, right? This is our third Sunday. So we're still figuring this out. Apparently, Governor Polis says we are blue in Denver, right? Hooray! Hi. So we may see things opening up even a bit more. We're doing things like coffee service, right? We used to have a dining room full of food. In fact, by now you'd be smelling it and your belly would be growling. We're not quite there yet, right? We're not quite ready to all eat together, but we do have coffee. And come on through, grab some coffee, tea, water, take it on outside if you would. But these are the kind of things we're trying to do. Danny Stange and his wife, stand up or, or wave at us. Hello. Danny is one of our beloved friends of Althea, and next Sunday we're celebrating Earth Day, 
And Danny is, and his wife are going to present for us. They're going to be our main message. And he's, yes. And he's going to bring in messages around indigenous peoples, around the Latino culture. So very cool stuff coming there. And we also have Michael with his didgeridoo and all of his other interesting yeah. instruments that will be with us that week. The next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Cinco de Mayo on May 2nd, so we're a little bit early. An amazing speaker, Lachlan, Lachlan Quintera, more amazing music. Then we'll be into Mother's Day, and we always have an amazing Mother's Day presentation. And we're going to be around Memorial Day, and I think we might be talking about loss and some of the things that we lost over the pandemic. So just know that the cool speakers, the diversity, the excitement, the amazing music, everything that makes us Althea is still going to be here and it's going to be different every time and it's going to be a wonderful ride. So thank you for joining in this ride with us. Uh, just a couple of reminders. Ginny mentioned coffee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're interested in our classes, go to our website, altheacenter.org. Uh, we have prayer partners this morning. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with that, these are individuals. They will be out in the library, in the meditation room. Uh, for those of you who are in need of a prayer and a prayer practitioner, we'll greet you and pray with you uh, an affirmative prayer. And speaking of prayer, let's close our eyes and I'll close us out, but don't go away because we're going to have lovely Stephen again. And so what a glorious, glorious time it has been, this gathering of community, this basking within each other's presence. So, so important we have found to be fully realized as human beings and as community in the flesh, in spirit with our laughter and our tears. And it is such a time of thanksgiving, thanks to our beloved center here and its founders. And as we walk out into this glorious Colorado day, we take with us this sense of joy and purpose, knowing that indeed each of us matters. Amen, amen, amen. And so, what a great day. Uh, thank you so much to Daryl and <clears throat> Mary Jo, and I'll do Stephen here, uh, and our, uh, who am I forgetting? Susan and Aaron and who? Ushers. Ushers, yes, everyone who made this day happen in Aaron. So thank you all very much. And once again, thank you to you. See you next week, Stephen.